Hey gang, uh, I just wanted to hop on real quick today and talk a little bit about how decluttering can save you tons of money. Oh my word. I have found that clutter and money go hand in hand. They tend to, if, if we have too much stuff, we often don't have a good handle on our money situation. So when we start getting a, a better hold of our money situation, our clutter tends to decrease. And the opposite is true. The more we declutter, the more mindful we become about our spending, then the, the clutter starts to go down. So they, they both have this really cool effect on one another. So there are four ways that you can easily and I mean it easily start saving money today by dealing with your clutter the first thing is to reduce your shopping now I definitely think that you can live a really fun life and spend money and have you know go shopping and you don't have to be like this like super strict minimalist thing that's really been popular over the last five or six years or actually a little longer than that where you are only having you know like you can have like only a certain amount of sweaters and a certain amount of shoes and all that kind of stuff. I really don't think that we need to do that. But I do think that that sheds a really good light on the fact that we have just these habits, and they are truly habits, of just spending because we have some money in our pocket. So I was talking to my friend Jen Terrell about this recently, and she has this great idea about junk spending. And she calls junk spending anything that is... Um, not fulfilling, you know what I'm talking about. Like the kind of, of spending that after you do it, you kind of go like, oh, I probably shouldn't have spent that money. Or every time you go and you look at that object that you bought, maybe it was a purse, maybe it was a pair of jeans, maybe it was something for your kids or a new piece of furniture for your house, but there's something about that that you're like, yeah, that was not such a great decision. And then we hang on to that because then we have this sort of like, well, I bought it and I'm now going to sort of use it to punish myself. I mean, it's not like that conscious, but we do sort of like feel like we're resigned to keeping that thing because we we spent good money on it, right? And so that and then we it, it can get really our uh, space can start feeling really stuck because we're then surrounded with things that have negative um, connotations and ties to them. So just being more mindful of your spending. So what do I mean by that? Like when you are about to go hit the pay button or the purchase button or you're in the store, think about what it is that you are about to buy. Why are you about, about to buy it? So Jen calls this junk spending and she has this cool little tip. I really like this tip where you take a post-it note and you, um, as everything falls off of my desk here, but you just write junk spending or no junk spending or some sort of little trigger for you and then you just pop it onto your credit card or your debit card. So every time you pull it out of your wallet, it gives you that little like, mm, yeah, okay, maybe I don't need all of these leggings. <laughs> or maybe I really just came into Target to buy toilet paper and how on earth do I now have probably $150 worth of stuff in here and maybe it's because I've been having kind of a crappy day and I'm feeling bad and I feel like I need to take care of myself, that I'm treating myself well by buying some fun things that make me feel better. Well, they might make you feel better and I'm all for that, truly I am. But you gotta start thinking about the long term um, of what's going to happen to this stuff in your house. What is the impact? Do you have a place for this thing? Is it going to replace something else? You know, um, how long is it gonna last? This is a really, really important thing we need to be thinking about because we need to be thinking about like, how am I gonna get rid of this thing? And how long is this gonna end up in a landfill? just because I kind of wanted this thing because it's kind of fun and new. And I really get that, imp that impulse. I feel the same way. But I think we need to just sort of broaden our vision about this a bit and really start thinking about like what are the actual implications if I keep these things. So cutting down on your shopping is definitely a really big way to start decreasing the amount of clutter. And I will say one last thing on this point. I <laughs> it doesn't matter where you shop. It doesn't matter if you are shopping at Neiman Marcus or on Park Avenue, it doesn't matter if you're spending a little tiny amount of money, but you're doing it all the time by shopping at Goodwill. It makes no difference, okay? 
people can, I, I have found people sort of justify their spending, you know, like, or the, the amount of stuff that they have because I'm not a shopper. Well, if you're only shopping, you know, online, if you're only shopping at Goodwill, if you're only shopping at Neiman Marcus, it doesn't really matter. It's still shopping. If you are exchanging money for something else and is coming into your space, that is called shopping. By definition, that is shopping. So try not to fall into that trap of it didn't cost that much, um, it was used, any of that sort of thing. It, you're still bringing more physical stuff into your space. And we're trying to reduce that. So you might not be saving as much money as if you were shopping at a high-end store and stopping that spending, but you're still spending money and you can still save money by changing those habits. Okay, second of all, you can save a lot of money by paying your bills on time. I know that sounds ridiculously elementary, and I don't mean to be condescending about that, but oftentimes we get into this paperwork overwhelm where we have so much paper coming into our house. Maybe we have a job where we get a ton of bills or a, a ton of paperwork coming in through the mail. Maybe we have paper bills and electronic bills, and we can't really remember how we're supposed to pay it or when we're supposed to pay it. And, and a lot of the time we have the means to pay our bills, but we're just not paying it because we have too much going on. So decluttering our stuff uh, and creating some really simple systems it, and simple being like underlined, highlighted, asterisks, and bold. Simple because human beings don't do complicated. We love to make things complicated, but then we don't do them if they're complicated. So simple, 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 simple is always better, truly. If we create some really simple systems for how we're actually going to pay for this, we don't have to go buy a fancy calendar or buy the app or whatever. We can just write it down on a piece of paper and stick it on the fridge. It, I mean, simple, okay? So that we, but we actually have our, our mind and our attention is on what needs to be done um, and when it needs to, what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. So just, just sort of thinking through like, how could I improve this situation so I'm not leaking money? So the third thing is find your money leaks. <laughs> so what do I mean by this? A really good way, I'm not a big believer in budgets per se. Um, I think the best way to sort of curb your spending and look at where your money is going is to look retrospectively at where what your habits have been up until this point because until we really have an idea of um, how we're spending it it's really hard to change direction right because it's you know we just don't even know we're like oh yeah I don't I don't spend that much on this but I do spend a lot of money on this but the numbers may be completely different and the only way that you're gonna really know what those numbers are is to actually look at them I know that's not my personal favorite thing to do so I feel you if that's not your favorite thing to do but it is so empowering and I'm telling you the the tiniest little tweaks that we can make in you know in how we're spending can make a, a, just a huge difference in where we're going. What is the trajectory of our life? How much do we have going in savings? How much money do we have going to pay down that debt on those things that we might have bought that we probably don't even really like or use or even might even still have? So looking for those money leaks, um, if you spend an hour on that this week, if you just say on Saturday, I'm gonna start looking through, um, through my, my checking account and to see where I've been spending my money, you can you are in such a place of power to change your behavior and to change how what your habits are when you have that information that will be the best hour you spend this whole month promise 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 and it and if it's something that you really don't enjoy doing dovetail it with something that is really awesome have a really nice cup of coffee and a little treat, a little something, something fun. Go for a walk with your spouse or do something that you really enjoy at the beginning before you start and then bookend it with something else that you really enjoy. So, you know, try to make it as pleasant as possible. Put on some nice music. Honest to God, I light candles when I'm pay paying my bills, when I'm looking at my money stuff because it just helps me get into a better headspace about it and it doesn't feel sort of like I'm pulling teeth and I'm having to do something that I would, I'd really rather not be doing. So I'm, I'm not a financial whiz, but I do know myself. I know my own behaviors and I know how to get myself to do things that I don't want to do. So the fourth and final thing about how we, you can save money so easily by decluttering is to start looking in your space for the money. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I have found gift cards, 
un, um, uncashed checks, bills that we just needed to get reimbursed for. If you have medical bills that are outstanding, they, all you have to do is submit them to your um, insurance company and get reimbursed for them. Do you actually physically have money in your house? I bet you do. I, you might have jars of coins. You might have $20 bills in uh, you know, some birthday cards from a couple years ago. Go on a treasure hunt. Have some fun with this. It is unbelievable how much money, how much wealth, how much abundance we all have, and I really mean all of us, that we don't see, that we take for granted, that we don't pay attention to. So just, you know, have some fun with it. Again, spend a little bit of time. Just start poking around in your space. If, if there's something that you can sell, take some pictures, get it up on eBay, sell it through Craigslist. See if there's a neighborhood Facebook group that you can join where you can sell that exercise equipment that is moldering in your bedroom. Please don't keep it in your bedroom. Um, that you're never going to use again. Get honest with yourself. Do I really love, need, use this thing? Is it important to me in my life? Is it where I want to be going? If not, can I turn this into some cash? That would be awesome, right? Okay, so I hope that those four things really helped you quickly reduce your shopping, pay your bills on time by creating some sort of simple ba uh, bill paying system. Um, I really highly recommend mint.com. They have a phenomenally um, awesome, it's free, uh, website where you can upload and link all of your accounts. It tracks everything all in one place. It's super easy. Um, third thing is find your money leaks. Where are you spending that money? Putting, putting, uh, you know, your eyes on that and tracking what what is your behavior, and then going on that tr treasure hunt to see what you have around your house. I hope that helps. Tell me, have you found any money in your space recently? Give me a thumbs up if you have. Put an emoji down there. Let me know. I, you know, I, it's really, really fun to find things like that. Is there, is, was there something of value that you have in your space that, that you could sell, but you've been kind of hemming and hawing, you don't really want to, you're not really sure if it's really a good return on your investment? Share it below, put a comment below, and, and I'll help you think through like how you can actually sell it. Is that a good return on your investment? Some things really are, and some things really aren't. So let's get clear on that and find some money for you. All right, I hope you're having a great day.